It was last season where Baylor took a trip to Tennessee, where Tennessee and Nico Iamaliava was a top 10 ranked team. And in Josh Beckett's third career start, he put on a magical performance, including a rushing touchdown with just 14 seconds to play to give Baylor a 42 to 38 win and a massive upset to really put Baylor on the map and take them a little bit more seriously. Things have changed since then, and now these two teams meet in the Texas Bowl. It's Nico's final game of his Tennessee career, and he is coming off a Heisman Trophy victory, but he just missed out on the playoffs, and he is not happy. On Josh Beckett's side, things have been a little bit on the downturn, as Beckett's going to run for the first down, but Beckett struggled this season, and he has not captured the same magic that he did in that Tennessee game last season, as he's got the first down here to Tyree Dobbins, as Beckett's going to go to draw play and this is Tavoris Jones playing his final game in a Baylor jersey he is one of the better running backs in the nation as it's going to be a run for Beckett and he can't go anywhere on third down it's going to be Nico's football expect to see a lot of the ground game it's going to be Cameron Selden to lead back for Tennessee as they're going to throw one over the middle that's going to be caught and on the run already he's going to go all the way off the bat Nico delivers a touchdown to Staley for 75 yards Beckett in the Baylor offense now has to respond to Nico's touchdown. It was a shootout last time. Can Baylor put up the points this time around? They're going to get sacked here. It's going to be third down and long. Now spreading the field, but Baylor's going to get a little bit of help at least. A five-yard penalty drawing them offsides. It's going to give them a third and 11 instead, so still a long way to go as Beckett's going to go outside. That's going to be broken up, and that's going to be Tennessee football once again. Hand off to Selden, who's going to get blown up in the backfield. Samuel Pemba got in there, and now third down for Iamali Yava, who's going to get hit as he's thrown. Float in one deep, and it's going to be swatted by Trey Bender, and Baylor's going to get the football back, but they are backed up again, and Beckett's going to take a shot, but he's going to deliver to Tyree Dobbins, and third down and two. It's going to be a handoff to Boris Jones, who's going to get the first down just barely. Jones starting off a little slow, and now it's going to be more reliant on the passing game. That's a little dangerous as Tank Cherry with the first down grab is now a second down play. Beckett to throw. He's going to go outside. He's got two receivers there, and he's going to get a block from Cherry. JD Gibbs with the catch, and now second down once more. Beckett's going to roll. He's got a lane. He's going to run it, and Josh Beckett out of bounds in the red zone. No matter how good our defense has played this season, Tennessee's got one of the most explosive offenses in the nation, so you're going to need to put up points to keep up and Beckett's doing a good job so far on this drive second down and goal play action he's gonna float one Tyree Dobbins it was man coverage and Dobbins got ahead and Dobbins for the touchdown so Baylor ties this thing up 7-7 and now Iamaliava with the read option he's gonna keep it got the first down Nico can run but he does most of his damage with his arm these days and that's what got him a Heisman Trophy as Nico's gonna hand off to Selden for the first down and Baylor's run defense has been better at least in the back half of the season but it's still not going to be an easy task against this Tennessee offense. They got a strike there, and now Yamaliyev is going to read option, keep it, and he's going to get blown up in the backfield. So now it's going to be second and long, and Nico's got a wide open man and a blown coverage there. If that throw was a bit better, that would have been a touchdown potentially. As Nico's going to take a shot for the end zone this time, it's broken up second down and ten. Nico to throw it. He's going to go middle of the field end zone touchdown, and that's going to be Davis up the seam. And now it's 14. Seven and Beckett's gonna throw one at the seven yard grab so setting him up with a second down and three Beckett gonna move left and he's got an edge rusher in his face and he throws one and Tyree Dobbins already with his fifth catch of the game so he's getting involved a lot this time Dobbins had a big game against Tennessee last time around so he's looking to do it again now second down gonna be a fake and Beckett's gonna roll and he's just got nowhere to go with the football throws it away basically third down and Beckett is gonna get hit as he's throwing and it's gonna be incomplete so the punt now is going to be sent away and this is looking like a good one Thornton's gonna get down there and he's gonna get it inside the five yard line a great punt and great special teams defense is gonna set up a safety and that's a big play there to turn the tide in Baylor's favor that's Samuel Pemba we're gonna be sad to see him go after this game the punt back to us we're just gonna let it bounce and it's gonna go out of bounds so nice job from Tavoris Jones the senior 
making a smart play, letting the ball bounce, go out of bounds, and we're going to get decent field position. Only at the 30, but still better than where we would have had it as Beckett on third down. It's not going to matter. Three and out, and Nico's ball is going to be an RPO and beating him off the press. Trey Bender got beat, and Lee Cox going to go all the way for the touchdown. And another big one. That's Iamaliava's third of the game already in the first half. And Baylor down 21 to 9. Beckett just breaking a bunch of tackles and fumbling it out of bounds. And that's a, a play that sums up Beckett quite well. He just does a lot of reckless stuff. And now the fullback, Nate Dog is going to drop the football on second down. We don't usually go to our fullback, but when we do, we have to see him make that play. And now on third down, it's going to end up resulting in us punting the football away. So a fullback dropping the ball, obviously not a guy we usually throw to, but you got to make that grab. And now great field position. Four minutes to play in the second quarter. And Selden's getting going on the ground. Nico throwing outside on the RPO again. Again, that's going to be caught for the first down. They're in the red zone. Now inside the 10, third down. Nico throwing underneath. That's going to be caught right at the goal line. And it's going to be first and goal at the one yard line. Nico's going to throw it quick for the touchdown. And it's Leacock again. And now Baylor down 28 to 9. And we got to do something here. It's been the offense and the defense struggling today. And this is a game of revenge for Nico. He was embarrassed after last season's loss. Tennessee had a lot of expectations and to come out and let Baylor, who was 0-2 at the time, struggling in a rebuild with a bunch of young players, come out there and win. It was embarrassing, but now Josh Beckett going to have one broken up there. Nico is fueled by revenge in this game, and he wants to end his career strong. He's already angry that he didn't make the playoffs, and now seeing the team that upset him last year going to be his final career game. I mean, he is just fueled as now Tavoris Jones got it inside the five-yard line, so Baylor could go and get themselves a touchdown here. If they can, it'd be a game still as Beckett's going to run. He's going to try to make a man miss, cut it inside, and not quite to the end zone. Second down and goal option. Shovel option to the tight end, and someone jumped in front of it. Beckett tried to pitch the ball to Tank Cherry, and it's going to be a end of the half disaster for Baylor and now Tennessee they got the football to start Baylor really needed to score there because now with Tennessee they could go right into their ground game Selden with a three score lead Nico gonna throw but he's gonna get sacked this time around so Baylor's pass rush getting in there helping him out a little bit second down throwing one underneath and that's gonna be Selden now in the air He's going to get the first down, and Baylor's defense is just having a tough time. And there goes Selden for another big run, and they're in the red zone again. Nico going to go with a sweep. Selden, he's got the first down, and now it's goal to go for Baylor's defense. As a big heavy package, it's a play action. They're going to throw one. Enzo, touchdown, and Nico has his first fifth of the game and Baylor down 35 to 9 and not only that that was like a six minute drive to start the half so Baylor doesn't even have a lot of time and if they're going to want to make a comeback here it's basically just a perfect game what you need from here on out and perfect is not what you should be asking for from Josh Beckett because he is anything but that Second down, throwing Beckett. He's going to go on the run. Dangerous ball. That's going to be caught. And Tyree Dobbins got out of it. And Dobbins, at least, has had a great game. He has really made up for some late season struggles that he has had. And Dobbins now, he has got another big play. Now inside the five-yard line, Tavoris Jones going to get it. Trying to convert on third down and four. He's going to get to fourth and one. Obviously, Baylor's going to go for it. And the man in motion, Beckett's going to go for the power run. And he gets stood up and stopped. And not... Not even the power run from one yard out is going to get us a first down as there goes Selden. It's the fourth quarter and from here on out it's looking like it's going to be a blowout as there's going to be Nico having a misfire, a rare mistake from Nico in this game as Beckett's going to throw and there's Tyree Dobbins with another catch into double digits for catches, a career high for Tyree Dobbins and that's been the lone bright spot in this game it feels like. Baylor's going to have to get the football away to Tennessee after a misconversion and now it's just Tennessee able to do whatever they want with under five minutes to play as Nico's going to throw one. That's going to be intercepted so finally we get something on defense. It's Trey Bender and Bender's had an okay game at least. He's had an interception, a nice swat on a deep ball. Got 
stampede on the crest for a touchdown, but he at least got it back and made up for it. three minutes to play. It's fourth down again, and Beckett just hit as he is throwing turnover, and with 20 seconds to go, Tennessee could just run the clock. They could just kneel it out, but Nico, he wasn't happy with how things went last year. He pads another touchdown, and Nico throws for six touchdowns in the Texas Bowl and absolutely runs Baylor off the field in their home state. And that's an embarrassing way to end the season. We knew things were going to be a little rough with the QB issues that we had in this last part of the season. Beckett had progressively been playing worse and worse, and we turned to James Miley, and then Beckett came in in that Kansas State game, gave us a spark, three second half touchdowns. We decide, hey, you know, it's you could go either or, but let's go with the playmaking ability of Beckett against Tennessee because he played well against Tennessee last season. Maybe he can do it again, but Nico was just not able to be stopped. He was fueled by revenge, fueled to have a great final game, mad that he missed the playoffs, mad that Baylor took him down last year. It's just an unfortunate way to end a season that was so promising at one point. And when you look at the national championship, well... We took on Dylan Raiola, took him to overtime. He goes to the national championship, and they go down and lose to a team that was returning a lot of players. Arch Manning came back to go and skip out on the NFL because he wanted to win Texas a national championship. He did just that. So, I mean, bad that the national champions reside in our conference. And then you can see the positives, though. We took Nebraska to the limit. We took Dylan Raiola to the limit, and that team made the national championship. It just goes to show how good we were at the start of the season, early on, the first half of the year. We were in the top 25. We were as high as 20th in the nation. Then the majority of our problems really just came down to Josh Beckett. And, you know, the defense, they were struggling in the ground game early on, and they were able to pick things up. And towards the end of the season, Baylor's defense we were really good. We held Kansas State in check for a majority of the time. We were pretty good against some of these really high-flying offensive teams. And the offense just set them back so much. So many bad turnovers. That West Virginia game was the turning point where we just could not figure it out. We would outplay them, outgain them, out-everything them. And then he got in the red zone, and Beckett makes a boneheaded play, a scoop and score. He'll throw a pick six. He'll throw something that you just can't defend. Then when we went to James Miley, things got better for the first game, but there is a, a, an expectation that the backup quarterback, you don't got film on the guy. You don't know what he's going to do. So TCU didn't have any film, didn't have any preparation for Miley. So he was able to play really well, but then the UTSA game, kind of came back down to earth, played an okay game, and then just played bad against Kansas State. And you could see what the final numbers look like. Obviously, Miley overall played better, but he was a true freshman. He wasn't ready to play. We didn't have expectations to play him. We had no plans to play him. But you can look at what Beckett did side by side. The yards per attempt were down. The completion percentage was down. All the efficiency was down. Everything was just worse. And even in the ground game, it wasn't as good. And you can see even the fumbles, just so much more. So many more mistakes were being made. Miley stepped in. He played fine. But I don't know who's going to be the quarterback of the team next season. And it's going to be an open competition. But we're not going to just chalk it up to Miley or Beckett. We're going to explore our options. You can look at the receiving game. We had Tank Cherry make freshman All-American. Alejandro Easy was a breakout player. Tyree Dobbins is still good. J.D. Gibbs was an awesome freshman. And then on defense, someone like George Casillas was good. We had Shane Clinton step up. Samuel Pemba and Darren Agu were an awesome duo. We had Itarsagu, one of the better nickel corners in the conference. We had a lot of talent on this defense. Robbie Kane, when we put him in to, you know, substitute for the fact that we really needed some extra run defense, he did step up and help. We had a lot of talent on this defense, and a lot of them will be back. We're going to lose Agu, we're going to lose Samuel Pemba, we're going to lose Ryan Yates, but we have a lot of players returning on this defense. Kicking could be a little bit better, but it was a freshman kicker can't really expect much we are going to be looking ahead now to the offseason Baylor has some issues to work out but since we have taken over four wins seven wins eight wins we haven't won a bowl game yet 
but we're getting a little bit better each year. Obviously, starting with the players leaving, it's a pretty rough group, and we're losing one player prematurely. Isaiah Robinson, our best rated player and our left guard. No surprise that he is going to be going to the NFL, and I know some of our offensive line, you know, we've had a little bit of issues when it came to some holding penalties, but overall, the line was really good, and the coaches that worked with the line did a really good job. And we're going to be losing four of our five starters. Now, Tavoris Jones, leading rusher, he's going to be gone. Four of our five linemen. We got our left tackle, right tackle, our center, and our right tackle. So we are only going to be returning one guard as a starter. And the rest of the way, we're not losing a quantity of players, but we're losing quality players. Leaders in sacks, Agu and Pemba, going to be gone. Cornerback, Carl Williams, who's amazing, gone. We have Ryan Yates, our starting safety, gone. And when we look at what that means for who's getting drafted, looking pretty good for Baylor. A lot of representation. We got our linemen drafted and other people on top of that, two secondary members too. But now we move on to our first big move of the offseason. We had a little sit down with Josh Beckett and... He's not a quarterback by nature. He was an athlete who could do a lot of different things. He could play corner. He could play wide receiver. We're going to sit him down, and we came to the conclusion that he's going to switch to running back this season. The quarterback experiment just didn't work out. He still is a dynamic playmaker with the ball in his hands, and I know his rushing success was lower this season, but you have to take into account sacks. Sacks are a part of it, and they do knock your rushing stats down, but he is a threat, and... We're losing to Boris Jones, and I wasn't thrilled with LeBeau Wentworth this season to have him be our starting running back this year. So it's mutually beneficial that Josh Beckett just puts the quarterback dream maybe on the back burner, which leads us to what the quarterback situation is going to look like as James Miley is the only legitimate guy that we have. Now, we'll get to that in a second, but we have the rest of recruiting to get into. You can see a little bit of what Josh Beckett is able to do. He can be a threat out of the backfield, which is going to be nice. Something to Boris Jones. He was more of a pure runner, could catch the football, but we have a lot to get into when it comes to recruiting because we got a lot of players on our board still uncommitted. We got a lot of hours. We got a lot of stuff to put into, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you you know, recruiting's pretty straightforward for us. We did get a lot of players during the regular season, and we're just going to have enough time to throw sending the house, throw our pitches at everybody on our board. And this team, we have a lot to replace, and I'm at least optimistic about what our offensive line can be. But when it came to Beckett, the decision just came down to... He was getting worse, and he was playing behind a good offensive line. Three of the five linemen went to the NFL. That's a good offensive line in college, and if he was struggling behind that, bailing out of clean pockets, doing all the stuff that he was doing, it's not going to get better next season. And maybe he, as a player, can just be smarter and improve more experience, but he was already a little bit limited when it came to some of his mental and accuracy and timing, so... We just decide, move on. Worst case scenario, James Miley is the quarterback. But as we get into the rest of recruiting, here are all of our commits. And it's time to get into the big thing. There was one thing that I was hyping up in this offseason. And an opportunity of a lifetime presented itself. Something that I was not prepared for, something I was not expecting, something that I've kind of kept hidden until now. Once the transfer portal opened up, we got a phone call, and it was from a quarterback who hit the portal. And we were not expecting this, but we have a new quarterback here at Baylor, a guy who is from Texas. And not only is he from Texas, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. He is not just some guy coming in to fill in for a year. Welcome to the University of Baylor, everybody. The new quarterback, DJ Lagway, the former five-star, number one overall recruit from the University of Florida. He's coming to Baylor. Going into this offseason, I didn't know what the future of this position would hold. I assumed it'd be just Josh Beckett and James Miley having an open competition. But when the transfer portal opened up and the news broke that DJ Lagway was hitting the portal, he wanted to be at Baylor. You've seen 
his number one team. This wasn't some situation where he hit the portal and we came out of nowhere. He wanted to be here. He wanted to come home to Texas. He was considering schools like TCU. He was considering basically just going to the Big 12. He wanted to be there. But he wanted to be here most. And there's something to that, wanting to be here more than anywhere. He brings us a dynamic we have not seen here at Baylor quite literally since RG3. He is able to just move defenders with his eyes. He is developed. He is a final finished product. You can see what he is able to do. His pocket mobility, his presence, his ability to throw on the run, all that play extension that Josh Beckett gives us. Look at this play right here. Look at the slot corner on the blitz. He pump fakes the corner, looks him off, and then buys himself enough time. That's a little thing. That's a very minor thing, but that is a play that is the difference between maybe that nickel corner coming in and hitting you on the blitz and getting a sack and being able to go get five six yards those are plays that Beckett can't make and not many quarterbacks in the nation can make a throw like that it's not just throws like that it's the ball placement it's the ability to throw off platform there's a reason he was a top QB recruit in the nation look at the ability to just find in between defenders look at the ability to give his receivers opportunities to make plays the throws on the run the ball placement knowing when to move and when not to move when to stay in the pocket and when to step up in the pocket and look at this ball placement this is a team that was potentially a season away or maybe a quarterback away we were wondering what's going to be the thing to put this team over the top and it's not easy like it is in the nfl you could draft a quarterback and you you don't have to have him choose you you can go and get a free agent quarterback and just pay him a bunch of money you can go and make a trade there are no trades there is no draft the quarterback that you get has to want to be here. And Josh Beckett and James Miley, all respect to them, but move aside because DJ Lagway wanted to be here. He chose us because he sees what this defense was able to accomplish in the last parts of the season, how good they were, and how much struggles they had. You can go and look at the receiving core that we had. Did anyone put up flashy statistics? No. But Alejandro Easy, Tank Cherry, Tyree Dobbins, JD Gibbs, that is Four players to throw the football to. Four legitimate guys to spread the football around to. And when you have Josh Beckett move into running back, he can be, you know, a little bit of an explosiveness. But this team has now suddenly become a team with a weight of expectations because we're only getting lagway for a year. Yeah, he isn't some guy who's just going to be a bridge, but he's only going to be here for one season this is not somebody who's going to be you know oh let's just survive the season with this transfer portal quarterback no dj lagway has one chance at this team one opportunity to go and take baylor over the top this has ramifications though not just for this season what does it say that a number one ranked re recruit in the nation the number one quarterback in the nation the guy wants to come here what is that going to say for the rest of the recruits in upcoming recruiting classes? Maybe Baylor's a spot you want to go. We haven't had people transferring. Last two years, I don't think a single guy has left in the transfer portal. People want to be here, and people think we are building something special. And DJ Lagway is the guy to put this thing over the top. It's not just, let's get a little bit better each year. Let's not go seven wins, eight wins. The expectation next year, I don't think, is just nine wins and getting a little bit better. The expectation now, I think it's playoffs. You got to make the playoffs with DJ Lagway at your quarterback spot. And we had a lot of players that were starters graduate. But as you'll see, when we get into what this team is going to look like next season, we got a lot of guys ready to step up, ready to make plays. And we start off with DJ Lagway. He is a 88 overall in base, but he is a 92 overall. That's quite the upgrade from Josh Beckett, who was just an 80 overall. And you can see his ability to move is better than any quarterback in the nation. And when you take a look at what he has done in his career up until this point, it's not like he failed at Florida. He was really good at Florida. They just weren't satisfying what he wanted. And maybe he just simply wanted to be closer to home. He's from Texas. So why not go to a school in the state of Texas and one that is ascending? He could have went to the University of Texas, who just graduated and lost Arch Manning. But no, he chose Baylor. James Miley, on the other hand, 
maybe unfortunate that he's not going to get the opportunity to battle for the starting job this year, but he got a little bit better, and he's still now just a redshirt freshman. Remember, he didn't play enough games to lose out on the redshirt ability, so he's redshirt freshman, and like I said, Lagway, he's going to be here for a season, so Miley, it will be his job to lose next year. And then we go to Josh Beckett, who... I mean, he's a nice running back. He's got talent. He's got ability. He's a special athlete. And it's going to be important that he does step up. Now, this team's going to immediately take a shift from a heavy ground team to we're going to be throwing the football a lot. We have LeBeau Wentworth back. I wasn't thrilled with his performance last season, but he'll be there. And in the mix as well, four-star running back, freshman from last season, redshirted. Now, Brian Augustine, this is a guy who could easily step up and win that number two running back job and maybe even get some split carries because I don't know if Beckett is a, a guy I'm going to hand the football off to a 200 plus carries. We also got another four star back here, Sharif Ivory, who probably won't be seeing the field this season, but with LeBeau Wentworth graduating and Beckett not being maybe a natural running back, we're going to see what that looks like in the future. Alejandro Easy had a breakout season last year. And he went up a lot of overalls last year. He went up a lot of overalls during the season. And in the offseason, he takes a big jump. Look at how good he is now. And Tyree Dobbins is not too far behind. But to think that Alejandro Easy is the highest rated receiver on this team, that's wild. I wouldn't have predicted that. He was started up as a 61. He went up to a 71. Now he's in the mid 80s. Dobbins is looking good though. JD Gibbs is also looking pretty good. And Gibbs... I mean, for a number three receiver at this point, that's phenomenal stuff. And it doesn't stop with these three because we have other options to go to. We recruited a guy like Sean Wade, who is going to be a deep threat for us. Now, I can't justify playing him this season because at best he'd be our number four. And I think it'd be smarter to just use the extra year of eligibility we have on him. Because even if we're looking for a number four receiver that badly, we got options. How about Javante Cornelius, who was a four-star prospect for us? Little underwhelming with the normal development, but we have him. We have Pratt, who was our number four last year. We have Trey Bender, who can take some snaps on offense. We don't need to rush Sean Wade in just to get him playing time. Tank Cherry. And, you know, it was nice to find out Tank Cherry is a fan favorite on this series, it looks like. And he is looking really good right now. A massive leap for him, and he is primed for a big season with DJ Lagway throwing the football. Now, a little bit of an interesting part of this team. The offensive line. We lost four of our five starters. That was our biggest thing to replace. And we have a lot of guys in-house to try to put up and elevate to that spot. Here's our new left tackle. How about at left tackle for a freshman? Not a guy who's going to be starting this season. But Demarcus Cook could be a future piece of this team and I think he has a lot of room to grow obviously and we're not going to be seeing a whole lot of change here at left guard Cameron McRae the only returning starter that we have is going to be back for another year he's going to be I guess the leader of this group the only experienced veteran at center I showed him off last season I said he could very well be the center of the future well the future is now Dakota Parrish four-star recruit is going to be manning down the center spot and I think overall he is going to be a better player than what story was for us last season How about at right guard Jamil Aziki is going to be in that spot and he took a big leap as well now the offensive line is the group that benefits most from our coach boost so some of these overalls are a little inflated but like I said, we wanted to make sure the offensive line was going to be strong. Daniel Meridos is a transfer portal player who is, I guess, the best right tackle overall wise. But I don't think he's the guy that I'm going to be looking to start this season. I look at a guy like Clay Deaton, who has sky high potential as a freshman. And I think that this guy... Maybe we'll have some growing pains early on, but long term, this is the guy at tackle, and he's going to be starting. Robbie Kane was an awesome player who came in kind of midway through last season, earlier last year. He, you know, we put him in to help our run defense. He got four sacks in five, six games, was really good, helped us out a lot, got bigger, got stronger. Alexander Durant, what a jump from him, and Durant is looking to be a star player for us, our first big one of our first big I guess splash recruits you could say him and Beckett but on my year one recruiting board this was the best guy and he's looking like he could be the best player on this team not to be outdone though Brendan Bett he caught an interception last year in that Oklahoma game and you want a big body strong plug the middle guy 
well, he was pretty decent last season. He's going to be really good this year. At edge rush, it's another spot we had to lose a lot in. We lost both of our guys, Agu and Pemba, both transfer portal players. We're staying in-house. Trent Thomas is going to emerge as a guy who was a starter last season, but we benched him for Robbie Kane to get him more involved. He's going to be starting at edge rusher now. And then Alex Foster on the other side. So edge rush is going to take a hit, but the interior should be awesome. We're going to be playing Robbie Kane a little bit on the edge too for a bigger body guy. And when the future of the edge rush room is potentially going to be in the hands of Gerald Key, both Foster and Trent Thomas aren't going to be around next season. So Gerald Key very well as a redshirt freshman, maybe a sophomore if we decide to keep him around for you know the first season as a rotation guy will be a starter. Sergio Quintana was a athlete who we moved to linebacker, seen a little bit of playing time last season. We kind of rotated him with our linebackers. He's a full-time starter starter now and he is a phenomenal run stopper next to him Siante Schumacher who is a player I'm excited for really athletic really fun linebacker I think our linebackers in the middle are better than they've ever been and these two are going to be awesome together a very freaky athletic rangy duo Trey Bender is going to assume the number one corner spot and I would prefer though to keep him on the side that he is on the left side so I guess technically on the depth chart he will be the number two but he is the best corner on this team great ball skills great coverage ability just can't press but everything else he can do and he had three interceptions last year. We're looking to see if he can do even better this year. LeVar Thornton's going to take over for Carl Williams. And the thing about Thornton, he's fast. I mean, he he's a blazer. And he was a guy who's been buried on the depth chart because of various reasons. We've had guys be here over the past couple of years. Intersagans locked down the nickel roll. We had Trey Bender. We've had, you know, in year one, Caden Jenkins. Year two, Avante Dickerson. Year three, Carl Williams. Well, now year four, it's going to be up to LeVar Thornton to hold down that spot. Intersagan, though, awesome nickel corner. And the future of this team and our number four corner for this year, Leon Wilkins, a four-star player. He's not quite ready. His zone coverage is a little lacking, but for a number four corner, we're very happy with that. Next year, he's going to be outside as a starter, most likely. And then we got George Casillas at safety. Very reliable safety duo that we have had for the past couple of seasons. And, you know, we use three safeties on this team. I think we're going to be okay with using two this year. We've had to use Shane Clinton as a, you know, hybrid player. But we're going to be able to knock Clinton back to a strong safety role. Joey Salem is a very good player to have for the future of this team. He's got a sky-high ceiling, and we are excited for him in the future. But going back to Shane Clinton... A really big year. I was disappointed with what his, his development was in last offseason. It was very minimal. And then he just played amazing. He had a lot of big plays, a lot of impact moments, and he's now going to be taking over Ryan Yates' role. At kicker, Pierre Casey is back for another season as a sophomore now, and hitting 70% of his field goals last season. We're hoping he can do a little bit better now that he is a little bit better. At punter, it's a little bit of a different turn here. We are moving on to this guy, and I don't want to mess up the name, so I'm not even going to try, but Dude, this is our new punter. He, he's going to be here, and we need to take a look at what our red shirts are going to look like, and everything is going to be for this team. Let me know what you think of this team for this season. What are the expectations? Is DJ Lagway enough to put this team into the playoffs? Or will there be some issues? Will losing to Voris Jones and 80% of our offensive line be an undoing? I mean, even though Josh Beckett his overall looks good at running back, he's still by nature he's not really anything he's just an athlete he's a talented player with the ball in his hands but will maybe someone else emerge last year we seen Alejandro easy be a breakout star for us will maybe someone like Brian Augustine assume that role or who will be the guy to step up for this team will the offensive line be an issue will DJ Lagway mask a lot of problems will this receiving core this this quad group of pass catchers be a dominant force with Lagway will the defense be able to keep up we lost both of our edge rushers but the interior three is super strong the linebackers are better in the secondary even though we lost Carl Williams I'd say is just as good if not better I think this team has all the potential in the world to go out there win 10 games and make a playoff we are legitimate contenders for the big 12 title this year and it's lining up very nicely texas just won a national championship yes 
but that group really came together to go and do that. Arch Manning and a bunch of other players came together to play out an extra season. They're all gone now. Just look at Michigan in real life. You know, w w Michigan, they are a team that everyone stayed together, won a national championship, and then they just lost everybody. That's what Texas is going through right now. The spot at the top of the conference is wide open, and Oklahoma could take it, but we beat Oklahoma last year, and Jackson Arnold's going to be gone. They're moving on. The Big 12 is wide open, and as you take a look at what the schedule is going to be for this season, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Let me know what you think of what Baylor's going to be next season. How excited are you for DJ Lagway? Like, comment, and subscribe as all that stuff is super helpful, and I am so excited for what year four is going to bring to us. Baylor has expectations and we could be something special next year. I will see you guys all for season four of the Baylor Dynasty in the next one.